Welcome back to the Rules of Engagement. Before we jump into our next segment, let me remind you guys, if you miss any of the content we do here at the MLG Studios, you know, it's the Winter Championships, if it's any of the WCS Premier, Challenger, Qualifier, Qualifier for Challenger, Qualifier Premier, Top 5s, Top 10s, whatever, whatever uh, you miss, it's all there, youtube.com slash official MLG SE2 for free in 1080p high quality content. Also, don't forget, leave some comments on the videos. We sometimes do comment of the days, and also if you uh, leave questions uh, about anything on my rules of engagement videos, I'll answer those questions in the Q&A of, of whatever episode is as soon as I realize there's a question there. It's usually uh, within a day or two. So, on to our next segment. We'll be talking about two base colossi timings in Protoss for Zerg. Uh, extremely popular lately uh, on Korea, although they're actually they're just starting to die down. But over the last month, it's been really popular, and it's still something that's being mixed in. Uh, and it's a very strong timing. We'll talk about it. Crank does it versus Sen. Talk about the opening and important things to keep in mind when you're going to do a timing. Talk about defending timings. It's a very important thing to keep in mind if you're trying to defend these timings. And also, controlling the engagement location, how you can do that, and why it's so important to control that that uh, that spot. So we're going to jump into this game at the five minute mark. Uh, and when executing a timing build, we're going to watch this from Crank's point of view for now. The most important thing to do is just make sure everything is perfect macro-wise. Literally, like, you can't miss a single probe. I mean, obviously, it's not like you'll, you'll be shot and dragged off to, to prison if you miss a probe. But uh, these type of builds where you, where you are being aggressive, you're hitting a timing, it's very important to have your macro as polished and streamlined as possible. So make sure you don't miss any probe production until you're at the point when you want to cut probes. Also, make sure to not have any delays in the buildings. So, the instant the gateway's down, throw down the Psycore. The instant the Psycore's finished, throw down that robotics, right? Those are the most important things. Well, actually, the most important is non-stop probe production, non-stop chrono boost on probes until it comes time to, uh, to start chrono boosting the robotics. And then just make sure you get the buildings as fast as possible. Ideally, you'd also you know, hit warp gate at perfect timing, make your, make your gateway units perfectly. But if you like delay a little bit and you forget your, your next century for a little bit, it's not that, that big a deal. The most important thing um, is this perfect probe production and perfect timing on your buildings until you hit somewhere in the 45 to 48 probe range, depending on uh, the, the style. Um, I, 45 is a good number. I think Crank in this game is at the 48. Uh, not such a big deal here. Of course, he's getting that robotic bay right, right after the robotic facility is done as well. And then he queues up two immortals. Uh, and then a as he gets money, basically the idea is you don't need to add a lot of gateways first. What you need to do is make sure you get the tech units production going early because the robo only builds one at a time. And then what you need to do is make sure your probe production is perfect until you hit the point you want to. Right, he's, at, he's obviously at 40 here. And then you stop it. And just stopping making the probes will give you a lot of extra money and that's where you start adding extra gateways. He'll, uh, of course, he'll probably queue up a, a single Colossus, then he'll build three more gateways and then he'll go. Now, for a Zerg perspective, if you think they're doing a timing or you lost a timing attack and you're looking at all these things you could have done better, I, I can almost guarantee you that anytime someone loses to one or two base timing, uh, it's all, to, all due to the same reason. It's not like, oh, my build was too greedy. I, I didn't quite like get the right units. I made the wrong. It's almost never that. Almost every time you ever lose to a timing attack, it's because your macro wasn't good enough. Like 99% of the defending a timing is making sure your macro is, is absolutely perfect. So uh, just having as many units as you can at, at that moment in time. And it's not necessarily about how you open the build. For really early cheeses and stuff, that does play a bigger role. But for something like a two base time against a Zerg going three hatch, it's just all about early game, perfect macro, and then knowing when to, when to stop drone production. So the idea is you scout your opponent, and roughly you can kind of tell, okay, how many gases is he getting? How fast is warp kit going? When could he potentially attack me with anything I have to worry about? I mean, that's not like one Zelt, one Stalker, one Mothership Core walking across the map. Something that can threaten you. And if it's a big threat, a later timing, you want to give it a two-minute leeway. So, for example, as soon as he saw the box of facility, he's like, okay, he can't really hit me until like the 10, 10.30 mark. So at the 8.30 mark, he actually cut drones. But until the 8.30 mark, he made nothing but drones rush straight up to 64 drones. And then two minutes before that, he really started to crank out a ton of units. That's usually the general idea. And now one thing that's important. That, that's, that's the most important thing to say in timing by far. Like, right now, if, if, you're, if you put this in the hands of your, your gold level Zerg player, and put the Protoss side in the hands of your gold level Protoss player, the Zerg will win every single game. Like, it, these armies with, with minimal micro, the Roaches will just slaughter the Protoss army. 
right? Now, of course, at the high level, Protoss starts getting more and more, fish, more and more efficient because of insanely strong force field usage. But the idea is efficient for you guys at home. Worrying about the faint timings, 99% of it is just in the macro. If you macro really well, you'll, you'll just have so many units, their timing will just fall over. But the other part that's really important is there's a concept that if you're, it's, it's kind of like, you know, um, old fashioned duels, right? Like if, if, if someone says, challenges you to a duel, you know, and, and they pick, you know, like some guy gets to pick the weapons in a duel, other guy gets to pick the location in a time or something, right? Like it's unfair if one person gets to pick all the rules of the duel. And that's exactly the same with time attacks. If your opponent decides that the battle will take place at 1030, or sometime, but sometime around that mark, because that's when I'm going to move out and I'm going to attack you. It's not fair that they also pick where the battle happens. So it's very important as a defender, the attacker gets to pick when the battle happens. The defender should always be to control to, to a large extent where it happens. And the key way to do that is what you do is you, you take a look at the map you have and you, you look at the route they're going to go to cross your base. So there are going to be a potential couple routes. Uh, we're just going to take a look at one, though, and usually you can figure out which way they're going probably pretty soon after they leave their base, right? Um, so in this existence, Crank, being a very good player, is going to head along pretty much the edge of the map and attack this way, right? Um, or, I mean, he may go around here, but it doesn't, it doesn't really make a difference either way, in fact. Let's just say, let's just say he did this um, to be a little extra clever, to be a little bit more out of the range. So if you're the Zerg player and you're thinking, okay, I know because he's a good player, he won't attack. He'll, he'll go along the route that's close to the edge, so he can't be flanked as easily. Uh, when he pushes me, there's a small choke there. In fact, half of it is even rocks. It'd be very difficult for me to fight against Force Fields and Colossi there. That's how he most likely is going to push, or, and you'll actually see him walking that way. So now, it's very important not to just like wait till he gets to your base and go like, oh crap, and then send your guys and, and lose them all. It's important to recognize what's happening and, and find in that path the best place to engage. Right? So you're saying, you're saying, okay, he's going to do a time meet. If he moves out, I want to make sure I engage him when he gets to, let's say, uh, maybe like right, there's a couple locations. If you have a lot of units, right, right here, you could try to set up a, a multi-way flank, right? You could try different three ways right when he gets here. But that's, this spot right here is kind of far away from your production. So maybe you want to find a place a little closer to your production. Depends how many roaches you have as a protoss moving out and how quickly you realize you're moving out. So then, okay, maybe the next spot could be like right here, right? If I can circle around the back, get some units in here, come in here and try to get a three-way hit. Basically, the idea is find all the locations where there's the most different angles for the most service area. Now, that's, of course, the Zerg. If you're a Protoss player and the Zerg's coming at you with Roach Hydra, you're going to find that the choke point they have to go through to attack you when you guard the choke point. So depends on your composition, but basic idea is defender of a timing should always control the engagement. So we'll... we'll Look at how Sen does this, right? And exactly how Crank does it too. Remember, Crank's going to stay on the edge of the map. The reason why is, of course, so he's, there's less options or, of locations that Sen can really get a really great engagement on. So he's going to stay on the very edge. He's going to use a hallucination to try to figure out, okay, is, is Sen flanking me? Is he sending guys to flank me? Okay, there's, there's nobody there. Uh, make sure those roaches don't, don't be too annoying. Still going along the edge. And if, Sen, er, if Crank gets here and all Sen's forces are on this side of the gap, it's very, very bad for Sen. So that's why what he's doing is he's going to try to set up, it looks like he's going to pick that second point I, I pointed out, where all of a sudden he's attacking from a pretty decent arc, right? I mean, he's got almost a, almost a full 180 degrees around the Protoss army. Uh, and, you know, th what this does is all of a sudden he can get a good trade, right? There's a lot of forces that have to be used. A good number of roaches to get through. He's even able to take out a Colossus there. And now he's going to, you know, back away again until he gets a few more units, maybe pick off a few zelts. And now he, he's stuck back in his defensive location. But what he says is, okay, I can't hold this choke point very well, right? So Crank, of course, is taking a second to, to re-get some sentry energy. He, he couldn't go in until he had more energy back. Uh, and then, as he's killing, the reason why he's killing this, this wall is actually would be too good of a concave, trying to get his forces through there when bit it back up. And then meanwhile, Sen is going to hit this flank here, right? So he doesn't, he, he's always controlling how the engagement happens, the location of it, saying, okay, if, if, if I know you have to attack me, I can wait for you to walk into a location where I can flank you from two sides, or I, I can set up that flank from two sides because I know the route you're going and I know exactly where I want to make the battle happen. And so if you do that really well, of course, it's much less efficient for the Protoss, much harder to use force fields. The more your roaches are, are able to get into action, and uh, I mean, Crank didn't lose his whole army there because he's insanely good, but 
Uh, even without that, he was un unable to get the trade he needed to. And going forward here, of course, Senedix can run him over with superior roach numbers uh, and additional reinforcements. So we see here, of course, Crank's army gets overwhelmed. And, uh, I mean, even if he, like, didn't use the time warp earlier and had the energy to recall out here, he would still lose the game, right? It's a three-base Zerg with 65 drones versus uh, a two-base Protoss on 48 probes. And the, the Zerg has total map control now that they have this giant Roach army. Uh, game's pretty much decided. I mean, it's not completely over, which is why, actually, I always talk about, you know, how to make sure you, you win those games and you have an advantage uh, in, a lot of my, in a lot of my shows. So, you know, you can't sit back and, and, and drink your drink and, and wait for them to leave because you might end up losing 20 minutes later. But... It's a big enough advantage that a player like Sen is able to win the game from there. So, a couple things to recap really quickly. Always focus on your macro. Always focus on your macro. Like, it's almost every time you lose a game, yes, you, you probably lot, you, you could look at it, you're like, you know what, if I hit that one storm there and got six more Marines in the battle, I'd have won that battle and won the game. And it's like, yes, that's true. You're, if you microed better, you could have made a six, uh, you know, a six Marine to 300 mineral difference in the battle. But you know what, if you macro better, you would have had 4,000 more resources of units in the actual battle, and something like a single storm wouldn't even make a difference, because you just have that much more in your opponent. Um, so always focus on the macro, especially with time attacks. They actually, in, in Korea, like, people laugh at time attacks, saying it takes no skill to use these. Korea, they call them mechanical builds, because all there is is skill, right? That's all there is, just macro and micro, and, and boom, you go and you, you, whoever has better macro, macro, macro and micro wins the game. In the long games, that's where it becomes a lot more tactical, strategical, and choices come into play. But in these time builds, it's all skill. There's, there's no, it's all mechanical skill of, of how good you are. So always focus on the macro, especially if you're having a hard time in the opening and the mid games. And of course, remember, if you're defending, you should always control the engagement. The battle should be in a location that favors you. So wraps up this segment of rules of engagement. We'll take a short break and be on to our next segment, talking about Ultralis in Zerg versus Protoss in a game between Huck and Sen. <laughs>